The architecture of a civilization is its most endearing feature, and by this structure shall Texas transmit herself to posterity. Here glitters a structure that shall stand as a sentinel of eternity to gaze upon passing ages. Senator Temple Houston, 1888. The vision of the Texas State Capitol was a grand one, truly bold and encompassing. For more than a century, it's been a cherished cultural legacy and a fitting monument to the legendary spirit of Texas. The Granite State House in Austin has become such a familiar Texas icon that it's hard to imagine a time when it wasn't there. For more than a century, it's been a steadfast fixture of the state's landscape and character. But the government of Texas hasn't always been here. It moved many times before settling into its familiar surroundings at the head of Congress Avenue. Washington on the Brazos, 1836. A small group of Texans gathered in a one-room cabin here on a cold March morning. Their purpose? To declare independence from Mexico. With Mexican General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana and his army in hot pursuit, the new Republic of Texas fled, first to Harrisburg, then to Galveston. Shortly thereafter, General Sam Houston led Texans to victory on a battlefield at San Jacinto. With Santa Ana defeated, the Texans moved on, first to Velasco, then to Colombia, where the Texas Congress met for the first time. Here, the victorious General Sam Houston became the Republic's first elected president. And here, Texans debated where their permanent capital should be. They considered at least a dozen places, but in the end, they chose a new town on the coast that bore their president's name, Houston. When Mirabeau B. Lamar became president in 1838, he wanted to establish a new capital closer to the center of Texas. He asked Congress to select a site somewhere between the Trinity and Colorado Rivers, north of the old San Antonio Road. That site, as it turned out, was near a tiny hamlet on the Colorado River named Waterloo. Legend has it that Lamar discovered the site a year earlier during a buffalo hunt. As he gazed across the river valley from high on a hilltop, he reportedly exclaimed, this should be the seat of empire. The Republic bought 7,000 acres of land there and sent a team of surveyors to lay out the town. Several months later, government officials loaded up their archives and headed west. They named their new town for one of the founders of the Republic of Texas, Stephen F. Austin. The first capital in Austin was a plain, sturdy, one-story frame building. An eight-foot stockade fence surrounded the building for protection. To the east was Congress Avenue, the main street of town. It ran northward from the banks of the Colorado River to Capitol Square, a 26-acre site that would one day be the permanent home of the capital. Two years later, Sam Houston was re-elected president. He'd never concealed his dislike for the city of Austin, saying it was too vulnerable to Indian and Mexican attack. In fact, the Mexican army did invade San Antonio a few months later, and the president ordered his government to withdraw, first to Houston and later to Washington on the Brazos. Many people fled to safety, and by 1843, Austin had become a ghost town. The capital is the abode of bats, lizards, and stray cattle. Alas, poor Austin, thy seven hills are nearly deserted. William Bollard, 1843. In 1845, Austin's luck changed. Anson Jones was elected president, and he called a special convention there to lay the groundwork for statehood. The Republic of Texas came to an end on February 16, 1846. 
in a moving ceremony on the front porch of the old wooden capitol in Austin, Anson Jones lowered the flag of the Republic for the last time. In the spring of 1850, voters in the new state of Texas were asked to settle the capital debate once and for all. Their choice, by an overwhelming majority, was Austin. After the election, the legislature set aside $100,000 to build a new state house. The limestone structure would be the first capital to occupy the four-block square at the head of Congress Avenue. The money to build a new capital came from $10 million received from the federal government in the Compromise of 1850, when Texas relinquished claim to the eastern half of New Mexico. That money also paid for two other important buildings in the capital complex, the Governor's Mansion and the General Land Office. The Governor's Mansion was completed in 1855. At the direction of Governor Elijah Pease, master builder Abner Cook of Austin designed and built the Greek Revival home at a cost of about $15,000. Across the square, the General Land Office was completed in 1856. Designed by Texas architect Christoph Conrad Stremmer, a German immigrant, this medieval-like stone structure held the state's public land records. For more than 60 years, Official maps of Texas public lands were drafted by hand and preserved here. The GLO also administered the state's vast land holdings. It provided land grants to encourage settlement and oversaw the land transactions that helped finance the young state. From 1858 to 1881, Capitol Square remained essentially unchanged. The old stone capital served Texas for almost 30 years through the turbulent years of the Civil War and Reconstruction. But by the mid-1870s, Texas needed something larger, more modern. Unfortunately, the state didn't have the money to pay for it. What it did have was land, and plenty of it. So in 1875, a state constitutional convention drafted a plan to sell 10 counties in the Panhandle, more than three million acres, to pay for a new state house. Texas voters approved the plan and a new constitution in 1876. Then one rainy November day in 1881, the old stone capital went up in flames. Some sparks from a stove ignited a room full of books and in less than two hours, the place burned to the ground. Many priceless records, books, and paintings were lost in the blaze, but as a local paper noted at the time, not everyone mourned the building's demise. The venerable edifice that bore such a startling resemblance to a large-sized corn crib with a pumpkin for a dome, and whose halls have so often resounded with legislative eloquence, reminding the distant hearer of a dog barking up a hollow log, is gone. Texas Siftings, November 12, 1881. With its old stone capital gone and a new one still on the drawing boards, the state found itself in a bind. Governor Orrin Roberts called a special session of the legislature, and in April 1882, $50,000 was appropriated to build a temporary capital across the street from Capitol Square. It would house the government for five years. <laughs> ¶¶ 